Hello everyone, this video today is all about line work and how we can get our brickwork, our roofs and our fences and our walls all looking fantastic with just a few little hints and tips. Instead of putting not enough detail or putting too much detail in, with just a few little changes and thinking about the character of our line work, I'm going to show you how to do a modern house, an old house, a derelict house, a wooden fence, an old fence, all sorts in this video. So keep watching if you want to find out how I do my brickwork, my fences and my roofs in my urban sketching. So um, walls are in you know, pretty much everything that is urban sketching and they come in a variety of different types and the amount of detail and texture can feel overwhelming sometimes. So these are my tips and tricks on how to capture walls and without spending too much time and effort just to get the idea of that texture. So let's just start and let's have a think about why it's important. So if we just draw a little house front on, we just draw it as a sort of normal just set of shapes really. We pop in a window, a door. There's just so much empty space here isn't there? There's so much empty space and we can't really tell what what kind of character this house has we don't know too much about it there's this information missing now the next thing we could try doing would be you know maybe even you draw every single brick but before you know it even if i just do this really small area here of a house let's say we've got our window there you know, there is a time and a place for doing this level of detail but the amount of ink there is overwhelming and if you try and apply some colour or if you want to bring out something interesting over here or over here the amount of ink there is is going to really just totally draw the eye or create this excessive contrast excessive depth that you're not, not after so how can we effectively just capture some wall textures um, a lot quicker than we can do this and and yet still be really effective so let's let's just do this same house and we'll start at the beginning and think about how we can do it even from our first line so let's say this is quite a modern house so quite clean red bricks well first thing we can do is just get that idea even as we do our first line you start to get the texture just by doing these little wibbles and wobbles and then maybe even the bottom you can get the idea of what's in front of the house by doing some little grass cutting into the bottom of a little bush and then instead of just drawing a flat line or well, the door can we can just lift it up a bit and then we can do the same as we go up here just get these little ideas of brickwork and before you know it you've already got loads more information about this wall we can do the same as we come across doing our roof just getting the idea that oh, there's a bit of gutter or something extra going on up here. And then even with the top of the roof we can give a little little dip and give it a double line and it's all just implying information. So already we've got something more interesting here and if we pop our windows in exactly the same way or approximately the same way, pop our door up here where we've given it a little ledge to sit on and then pop our window here. We've already got something which has got a lot more character, a lot more information. You get the idea of a, you know, something rugged with actual texture in these in these walls. But we can easily add a little bit more than this. So you're still thinking about the idea of a modern brick wall, a sort of red brick house. We can start to introduce some maybe just horizontal lines in a few places, and just always step back and see that is a too much, not enough, where can we add more? And then we can turn those horizontal lines into little collections of bricks. So where we've got all of these bricks here, instead we've just got a few bricks but they're spotted around and occasionally just a, a couple of lines, occasionally a full brick. And now we, we know what that is, don't we? We know this is a a house made of small bricks and we get the idea of some character to it and 
fairly neat walls and it's taken us no time we've drawn very little but we've told so much more of a story than over here and let's have a little think about another kind of wall so if we call this the red brick wall apologies for my writing let's think about where you have those really big sandstone type blocks or or perhaps limestone where the houses are got these irregularly sized really big bricks how can we get that well let's do the same house and start again at the beginning instead of lots of little marks as we go up we can make the marks much bigger so we're still going in and out but we're getting the idea of the the texture being much coarser the what's changing is is much bigger each time we can still do the same little indent for our uh, our um, door and that just gives the door something to sit on so normally you know you've got a little step or something we could do the step here as well couldn't we so then we've got steps going up i've drawn the draw door much bigger this time that doesn't matter really because it's all about just implying character you can immediately see the difference between this building and that one and then when we do our lines well we can still do these same horizontal lines but maybe the bricks are more uneven so we want to make these lines less straight we want to make them curve in places and then we can start just drawing in horizontal lines which also vertical lines which bring these sort of brick shapes into being and we just make them a bit more random we just introduce different sizes we tessellate them together so we've got different shapes and then we can pop our windows in as well now you could have done the windows before can do them after it doesn't really matter and we've got a much different feel to this building if i just pop a roof on so without much effort much fuss at all we've got a very different feel to something which is totally the same shape isn't it and we can we can play around with these ideas so we can be far more abstract with our bricks even um, so if I just really quickly draw the outline we can just do lines just simple hatching and that tells us something different as well perhaps a, a more run-down building more sort of if we even had loads of wibbly wobbly lines to where the the windows are this is much more something which is perhaps at risk of falling down or the the paintwork is cracking or you know it's again the same shape but it's telling a totally different story to these other ones whilst we're here we could have a think about roofs as well couldn't we so a roof again that's a bit boring but then if you're going to draw like every tile it's going to get really busy and you're going to have difficulty or at least i have difficulty getting the perspective of every single tile right so that as we get further away they need to get smaller and the angles need to change as they change where they are on the roof instead we can try a couple of really simple things so let's do a modern roof well they're really well organized aren't they so just some horizontal lines and then just some sharp lines which follow the perspective of the roof so they're going to be angling this way towards the side angling down towards the middle angling this way towards the left for a more sort of you know this this big sandstone older type of house we just do them a bit bigger and can just again just add in these little textures and shapes we can start if we want with those horizontal lines and use those to to build off and again totally different feel very quickly down here maybe we've got um you know sort of a falling apart roof again one of those really old slate roofs is a bit of run down you can just get these horizontal lines now just become wiggly and you build them in and they wiggle around and some of them fall off and then there's gaps where there's well there's areas where it's really dark and there's areas where there's total gaps and we can get the the roof line itself to just be almost like it's full of holes and it drops down loads it's got wobbles everywhere and again 
totally different feel using one pen and just changing how we're making our marks. Now, another interesting type of wall, very common in the UK and in, um, especially in Yorkshire and in, in the countryside is a, a dry stone wall. And that's the kind of wall which is built up with just blocks, irregular blocks, it has a really classic shape. Now, how can we, how can we get that kind of wall? It's different to all these kind of buildings we've been sketching. Now again, it's so if we were to draw it, what we've kind of got is at the top you've got lots of blocks standing upright, and underneath you have irregularly sized blocks which are tessellating together with some gaps and they sort of all come down and then at the bottom it tends to be in a field so you've got lots of grass. And again, like all these others, there is a time and a place for this, certainly. And um, lots of people do lovely sketches of this kind of environment using these very dense lines. But it's not quick, it's not time efficient, and it's going to draw the eye. So if your interest is this house, but in front of it you have this wall, you're going to really struggle to see that house because of how dense the line work is here. So how can we get these kind of dry stone wall effects without all this ink? Well, the way I like to do it is to start with the top of the wall. So you get these wobbly lines with lots of vertical lines coming down, being nice and gentle, making them nice and irregular. And then you go to the bottom of the wall and you draw in the scenery. So there's some grass and again, it tends to be like a little bush or just this sort of classic English countryside feel. And then you've got this sort of void in the middle and you want to describe the key features. You've got this key vertical section and horizontal section. So you pop in another line and you just sort of do the inverse of the first line you did. So you go up and then here you can just map in a few areas of brick. And then one of the really nice things about these, or interesting things about these brick walls, these dry stone walls, is the shadows so they do have areas of depth and darkness so then just go back in and pull out a bit of yeah it's dense ink but it's not everywhere and you're just showing by pulling out some of these lines making them dark even doing a little bit of gentle hatching in a few places things like that and suddenly you've got the texture of a dry stone wall without all of this overbearing uh, weight of ink Whilst we're here, we could have a think about a couple of fences as well, couldn't we? So again, you could have a fence on this house, which is here, and effectively it's going to be a couple of fence posts and some fenced areas, but this just doesn't tell you very much. This is just shapes, and you kind of know what it is, I guess, but it's not obvious. It's not, it's also not telling me if it's old or new. It's just a block. So instead, we could... Start, let's start with this kind of modern fence to go with our modern red brick house. And it's made of these lovely sort of wooden slats, isn't it? But it tends to be very neat. So the top's got a nice trimming, so it's a straight line. And then it's got a fence post, which is fairly neat, and then top again. And you could draw the bottom, but maybe there's a couple of bits of grass growing because it's still a you know outdoor structure. And another fence post. And then it's, again, it's, it's neat. It's made up of these lots of vertical or maybe horizontal pieces of wood. So you just suggest them. Rather than drawing everyone all the way down, you suggest the vertical textures by doing some lines all the way down and some lines just a little bit of the way. And you could stress that there's a trimming on the top by making that line bolder. You could stress the grass. You could stress a bit of shadow in here by going over some lines but it's just about getting that essence of the texture again it's the difference between that and then trying to draw every single bit of wood and every little knot in each of the bits of wood another fence would be this same wooden fence but in 10 years time this time you know it's fallen apart there'll be little bits out knocked out of these fence posts so make them really irregular 
this will be old, the top won't be neat, it will be sort of this idea of a curve where it's, it's slumped just suggests age. We can go down again and we just get this idea of old, degraded kind of irregularity. And so we need to be thinking about this, just like here and here, we're thinking about these changes from the, from the very first lines that we're putting in. Again, there might be a lot more grass, so we've got all this grass coming up, or hedges and bushes covering the bottom of the fence. And then these lines will be way more irregular, and there might be dark areas, and it might be really um, no longer parallel lines, but lines which are sort of just slumping all over the place. So again, we've got these, the same lines really, done in a slightly different way and producing a dramatically different feel, a dramatically different type of structure and character. And so I think that, that for today is all of my, all of my little tips. Um, there's lots and lots more that we could talk about with these kind of sketches, these kind of ways of developing our line work. Um, but I think fundamentally, if, if I was to give you a handful of things to, to take from this, it's don't just draw shapes, remember the shapes, but make those lines interesting. So the first lines you do are adding some real character. Don't get bogged down in the detail, but just reflect that detail in a few little bits and, and pieces. And then don't overdo it. So too much boldness will detract from what you're trying to achieve. Whereas a couple of little bits of high contrast really add something to the whole image. Anyway, hope that has been useful. Please do let me know, leave a comment, um, like and subscribe if you have found my videos interesting, if you want to see more. And it's been great having you along for this fun little video. Hope you have a good rest of your days.